On China's steep rise in COVID-19 infections may have peaked or be nearing a peak in mega cities such as Shanghai. But authorities are bracing for the coronavirus wave to wash over rural China soon. Experts warn the majority of Shanghai's 25 million people may have been infected during the recent surge. State media, though, playing down the severity of the outbreaks despite obvious stresses on the healthcare system. COVID-19 patients have crammed hospital corridors in Shanghai as a new wave of the virus rages through the city. Reports say hundreds of patients, mostly the elderly, are lying on gurneys in public areas as emergency wards have reached capacity. A senior doctor says 70% of the mega city's population may have been infected since last month. Medics in several cities continue to report that they are treating a steady stream of coronavirus patients despite testing positive for COVID themselves. Despite a clear surge in cases, Chinese officials have been quick to downplay the situation, claiming that just 22 COVID-related deaths have been logged since December. Beijing's reversal on three years of hardline curbs has unleashed an uncontrollable spread of the virus, but it has also allowed normalcy to return. Packed trains, crawling traffic and bustling airports. For many, it signifies the perfect start to the new year, albeit a long overdue one. Domestic tourism within China also receiving a major boost. Key attractions saw an influx of visitors over the New Year's holiday. Some operators say numbers more than doubled compared to the same period last year. Local officials are bracing for a virus wave to hit the country's rural interior as millions prepare to travel to their hometowns over the upcoming Lunar New Year holiday. And for more, Lo Min Min joins us live from Shanghai. Min Min, China is set to brief the World Health Organization on its COVID-19 situation. Although the WHO is already urging China to be transparent on its health data, is the UN's health body likely to get reassurance on that front? The WHO is looking for specific data on disease impacts, including hospitalizations, ICU admissions, as well as death toll. Uh, but the Chinese foreign ministry had said that they have already been providing these information in a timely and transparent manner, that they have provided information on the genetic sequencing of recent COVID-19 cases, and that they will continue to cooperate on technical exchanges. Now, based on the tone of the Chinese government messaging so far, it does seem unlikely that China will be providing the kind of granular data that the WHO is looking for, nor will China change the way that it has been counting COVID-19 deaths, which critics say are inaccurate. China has insisted that they have been counting COVID-19 deaths this way throughout the pandemic, including only those that died directly of respiratory failure as a result of COVID-19. This is in contrast with many other countries that count uh, deaths from all kinds of underlying diseases as long as the patient tested positive for COVID-19 at the time of death. And so critics are saying that China's way of accounting for the COVID-19 death has severely underestimated the spread of the virus. Uh, but so far, for instance, today China reported less than 5,000 cases and only three deaths. But anecdotal evidence suggests otherwise. Crematoriums are running out of spaces for bodies and doctors in public hospitals that I spoke to told me that most of the doctors and nurses, they have already gotten COVID-19 or are recovering from it. And they are still severely shorthanded, especially in the emergency outpatient department where we're looking at wait times of around four hours in Shanghai. Um, I mean, another area of potential friction, China is saying it will hit back at countries that want to impose restrictions on visitors from China for what it says are, quote, political goals. What does that mean and what could China actually do in terms of retaliation? 
Well, currently, we are only hearing verbal uh, hit back at these measures. Uh, Chinese Foreign Ministry calling them a form of political manipulation and discrimination against Chinese travelers, saying that there is no grounds for special uh, measures to be placed on Chinese travelers uh, based on the unfounded fear that China could spread new variants of COVID-19 to other countries, given that most variants found in China have already been observed in other countries and new variants could occur anywhere. Uh, but so far, you know, it's unlikely that China will take concrete retaliatory measures so soon after it had just announced that it would lift quarantine restrictions for inbound travelers. But one way that China could possibly retaliate could be to use state media to fan the flames of nationalism to encourage a travel boycott to those countries that impose these travel restrictions. Remember that the year before the pandemic hit, global spending by Chinese travelers was at $250 billion. That is a lot of tourism money at stake, and it could be an economic leverage to ensure that other countries don't anger Beijing too much. Oh, thanks for that. Lo Min Min reporting live to us there from Shanghai.